Are you an educational leader who is struggling to create a thriving school environment where students are succeeding, teachers are motivated, and data is driving instructional improvement? Trust me, you're not alone because many of our leaders are overwhelmed with the daily demands and they're missing out on key strategies that can truly transform their schools. In fact, most leaders believe that simply enforcing the rules, focusing on test scores, and maintaining the status quo is gonna get them there. When in fact, that status quo may be holding your school back from realizing its full potential. So in this episode, we're gonna share three must do's as an educational leader that you are gonna to wanna to implement and incorporate into your leadership practice. Grab a pen, a piece of paper, and get ready to take some notes because we're starting right now. Hey everybody, Gordon Emerson here, Superintendent of Schools and Gallup Certified Strengths Coach. And on this channel, we leverage my experience from classroom teacher to school district superintendent to help you go further faster in your educational journey. If this is your first time with us, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you don't miss any cool updates or any of our latest episodes. All right, everybody, welcome in. So I'm thinking and reflecting on my experiences as an early educational leader, as a school site leader, as a school site principal. And there are really key things that I've learned along the way that I wanna be able to impart as knowledge, wisdom, insights, hacks, if you will, that can help you just be that much more successful in navigating the challenges and the complexities of being an educational leader and more specifically, a school site leader. So we're gonna talk about three do's, three must do's as an educational leader that I want you to incorporate into your daily practice, into your strategic thinking, into your strategic leadership. And these are things that you always wanna have at the top of your mind that you always wanna be thinking about and that you want driving your decisions, you want driving your perspective and your mindset around leadership. So let's jump right in with must do number one. Okay, so your very first must do as an educational leader is all about fostering a positive school culture. Now, why is this important? It's all about the environment that you create. When we wanna think about things like student success, teacher satisfaction, community engagement, all of those facets of overall school performance is all around the environment and the culture that you create. So when we think about creating that positive and fostering that positive school culture and the mindset and the leadership that you bring to that, I want you to think about three specific areas that you wanna focus on to create that positive school culture. The very first one is all around promoting inclusivity. We're in a diverse, culturally rich world with differing perspectives, differing mindsets, differing backgrounds, differing values and cultures that come in to our schools. And our schools are really this beautiful melting pot of a place where all these wonderful things can come together. So you as the leader have the ability to promote and create that inclusivity. And so be really mindful of honoring and valuing the inclusivity of all stakeholders, of all students, of all staff and their perspectives that creates this rich tapestry for you and for your school community. The, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is recognizing and rewarding the gifts and the talents and the contributions of others. If there is nothing more powerful that we can do as leaders, it is the ability to recognize the good works of folks, to recognize the exceptional achievements and the growth and the maturation of our students, and then the ability to also then reward that. And when I say reward that, I don't mean monetarily, but rewarding that, making sure that that recognition is rewarded with some sort of direct and meaningful, impactful um, activity, event, moment, because we as leaders have a profound impact on the engagement, the, the joy, the commitment of our students and of our staff. And so if we find ways to recognize and reward their good work, their dedication, we create that rich environment. And then thirdly, let's talk about open communication. If you wanna create a positive school culture, 
It's all about having that open communication, that dialogue, that two-way flow of information between yourself and staff, between staff and students, between staff and the community, between you and the community. Having that open flow of communication where people feel they can share their thoughts, their ideas, their perspective, their concerns, their challenges. How do you create those on-ramps for folks to be able to share? How do you create intentional ways of sharing where you are and what you believe and what you'd like to see? But having that open communication is the third leg of the really, really important components of fostering that positive school culture. All right, let's move into must-do number two. And must-do number two is all about continued investments in professional development for yourself and for your staff. Now, why is this important? Because the continual growth of the skills, the knowledge, and the capacity of your staff and of yourself is a driver in being able to meet the diverse needs of the students that you serve. And so when we think about what are the best ways to make sure that we focus on professional development, again, let's talk about three key components. So number one is make sure that you have often and frequent professional development opportunities and trainings, whether those are staff development days, or those professional development days, or those carving out as a part of your weekly routine staff collaboration time, but making sure that you have the opportunity for frequent dialogue, discussion, and reflection. Let me say that again. You have to create intentional time and space for dialogue, discussion, and reflection. We know that far, far too often we get so drawn into the work and doing the work and doing the work that we don't have a chance to step back and spend a little bit of time just reflecting and just thinking about where we are, the work we've accomplished, what we need to accomplish next. Sometimes we're so driven by the next task, the next task, the next task that we don't take the time to reflect and see if the previous task that we just did is working. And if it is, should we do more of it? And if it isn't, should we do less of it? But because we're go, 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 go. So we just have to make sure that we create that intentional time and space. And most importantly, making sure that there's ample time for reflection for us to continue to grow and develop as leaders. Additionally, you wanna encourage that collaboration. You wanna to talk to your teams about how important it is for them to collaborate. We don't want to operate on islands. And I know, especially having been a former high school person, we operate in departments and then we operate in content strands and then we operate in, hey, listen, this is my classroom, my four walls. I know what I got to do. Don't bother me. I don't need to collaborate. I just need to get my stuff done. I just need to do what I need to do with my students. I get that. But I also know and understand that in this interconnected world and for all the opportunities that exist, I learned the most as an early professional, you know, early career professional, early career teacher, I learned the most from collaborating with other teachers, veterans and newbies, veterans for the sage wisdom and for the sage advice and the, the things that they have, had been through and the hurdles that they knew were out there and helped me to navigate, but also my also newbie colleagues who were coming with these new fresh ideas that were sometimes way out of left field, but nobody else was thinking about it, but it was actually an amazing suggestion. But if we weren't creating intentionally that collaboration, how would those ideas emerge? And so just as important it is to make sure that you're creating offer, creating and offering regular opportunities for professional development and training, you have to also intentionally create the opportunity to collaborate and giving your team space and time to collaborate, you know, helps to cultivate that rich, series of ideas from each other. And then lastly, if you wanna to go to the next level in this type of work, it's really about creating personalized professional development plans. We stress to our teachers how important it is to have individualized learning opportunities for students because every student is in a different place, right? And so let's not give this one shot, you know, fits all, so let's not give this one size fits all perspective, but instead let's create unique opportunities for our students 
So let's also do that very same thing. If we're preaching that to our teachers to do for students, then we as leaders should be also creating the same thing for our educators. So as we think about creating personalized professional development plans for them as well, because some teachers need specific things, just like certain students need specific things. Some teachers need more depth in content area. More teachers, some teachers need more depth in ta tackling these technology trends and these innovative concepts that are out there. Some teachers need structure around discipline and classroom management. But whatever it is, how do we create the opportunity to give Gordon what he needs, John what he needs, Sally what she needs, and not assume that Gordon, John, and Sally all need the same thing? That is the next level of leadership, is knowing and recognizing that everybody has different needs and then creating the right systems and structures to provide that opportunity for them. And so when we talk about must do number two, it's how do you continue to develop the skills, the knowledge and the capacity of your staff by making sure that you invest continuously in professional development opportunities. And that strategy, or that's must do number two. So before we move to must do number three, share with us in the comments below, what are two to three strategies that you will incorporate as a school leader to invest continuously in professional development opportunities for your staff? What types of things might you do to give that commitment? How will you show that? Share with that with us in the comments below and let's move to must do number three. All right, must do number three. As leaders, we get to make decisions. And so must do number three is all about leveraging data to drive that decision making. Now, why is that critically important? Well, because we're charged with the responsibility of educating hundreds and in many cases, thousands of students. We're also charged with the growth, development, supervision and support of tens, if not hundreds of employees. And so the best way to make those decisions about what we should and shouldn't do and how we then understand what are the strengths the areas of growth, the opportunities that we may have, it's by analyzing and looking at the data to help to inform the decisions that we'll make. So the way that we will continually leverage and analyze data to help drive our decision-making is in three distinct ways. So the first way is obviously to collect and analyze the data, data on student performance, data on student behavior, student discipline, data on how our budget is trending. Where do we need to continually invest more resources? Where do we need to make sure that the operations are being effective and are being efficient? Those are all points where we're regularly collecting that data. And then as a leader, you've got to create an opportunity to think about how do I look at this data with some sort of frequency? We talk, we talk about cycles of inquiry, the plan, do, study, act cycles of inquiry. So as we collect the data, now we study the data. And so when we think about that cycle and we think about that work, are you doing that on a weekly basis? Are you doing that on a monthly basis? Are you doing that quarterly? Who's in the room with you when you're doing that data analysis? Is it your executive team? Is it your department or grade level teams? Is it the entire staff? And the answer to that question is all of the above. It just depends on what the data set is, and it also just depends on what the goal of the data analysis is. But you wanna make sure that you're creating a rich body of data to then help you to be able to analyze, review, and then react to that data. Again, through the plan, do, study, and act. Plan, do, study, and act cycle. So that's strategy number one. And then strategy number two in this is how do you then implement data-driven interventions? So once you know what the data is telling you, then how do you react to that? If the data is telling you you have students that are not performing where they should be, what are the interventions? What are the reactions? What are the responses? What are the new ideas, the new systems and new structures? How do you then respond to that? 
So I've got the data. The data is telling me that we need to do more in math fluency. What are the strategic actions, the strategic decisions that we are going to make in order to react and respond to that appropriately? The actual response to that particular issue is not something that you as a school site leader can do alone. And this is again where these different data sets and these different groups are going to drive and help you to make these data driven decisions. So collecting that data and then coming up with those interventions by having the right data and then having the right people in the room to then be able to create robust interventions and systems. And then the last piece of this is we've got it all, we've got the information, but how do we then create the opportunity to create more literacy around analyzing data? How do you train the staff? This is back to uh, must do number two around professional development. How do you create data literacy? How do you train your staff and how to analyze that data, review that data, understand what it is, react and respond to it, and then progress monitor it? So what types of activities, what types of training, what types of, what types of people will you bring in as consultants or trainers that can help to make meaning of the data? Because the data is just, they are just numbers. They are just statistics until we train people of how to collectively review, analyze, and respond. And so thinking about the critical step of increasing your staff's knowledge capacity and skills around data analysis and creating a high level of uh, data literacy is going to be really, really important to that overall strategy. But all of these things tie back together. Because when we want to foster a positive school culture, we want to create opportunities to professionally develop and invest in that professional development all around being able to make data driven decisions. This is all around these three must do's as an educational leader. Incorporating these into your practices are going to help you to be that much more successful as a school level leader. And if you want to hear more information about, you know, my own struggles, my own challenges as an early school site leader earlier in my career, you can check out this next video right here. It'll tell you all the, my stories of the challenges and the issues that happened my very first year as a high school principal. Uh, but I learned so much and I grew so much from that. So thinking about your overall growth and development is all we are focused on here, the principal leader and on this particular channel. So I hope this episode has provided a lot of value to you. Check the description below for information on our newsletter, mentoring, coaching, all of those resources are there for you. And don't forget to check out this next video. It's going to give you more information on how to be a successful school site leader. And we're going to see you on the next one. Be well, everyone. Thanks.